Well, senior researcher at the Australia Institute, Emma Shortis, says Mr Trump is already trying to politicise the verdict. Donald Trump has been running the line about this being a, a, a weaponised Department of Justice, you know, engaged in a political witch hunt. So he's laid the groundwork for, for exactly that kind of narrative that has been taken up on the right of American politics with gusto. We've seen lots of his um, contenders for the vice presidential candidate come out really aggressively with the same kind of lines. And then, of course, you know, in the in the other media universe, you see that this, you know, there was no possible other conclusion to this case that, of course, Donald Trump was going to be found guilty. So we see really a, a reinforcement of narratives that have, have existed for a long time now. I, I guess it will be over the coming days and maybe after sentencing that, that this next thing that I want to talk about is, is pondered more, and that is the historical significance of what has happened today. It is, look, you know, we talk all the time when we talk about Donald Trump about his historic significance. You know, he's doing unprecedented things all of the time. And so it's easy, I think, for, for the nature of today to be lost. But it is, it is astounding, you know, when you take a step back to think that a, a presidential candidate, a former president, has never been convicted of a crime before. And so for that to happen now in this political environment, you know, given the volatility, given we know that, you know, there's been a normalisation of political violence in the United States in the last few years, is, is it really is an extraordinary moment. Um, what about this comment from um, Donald Trump in, in messages to his supporters on his um, social, social truth um, site? Justice is dead in America. Look, again, this is, this is a narrative that Trump has been running for a, a long time, you know, saying that the Department of Justice is in particular, but, but the entire kind of security state is completely corrupt. And he tells his supporters that, you know, he is the only thing standing between them and that weaponised uh, deep state. And so there is this sense, I think, in the United States that there is one justice system for, for some people and another justice system for others. And Trump has been really effective, I think, at weaponising that narrative and in galvanising his base in particular. I think the, th the thing to watch will be how this plays out outside of his base because we know his base is rusted on, of course, you know, apparently nothing is going to shift. The matter is how it affects that circle. Um, let's talk about the international um, reaction. Um, unsurprisingly, I guess, um, leaders around the world don't really want to comment on, on what has happened. But you can bet your bottom dollar they'll all be watching quite closely. Absolutely. You know, we've had the Prime Minister of Australia make a comment today, you know, even though he didn't say anything um, particularly uh, detailed about it. But of course, world leaders are, are watching this as we as we were just discussing. You know, this is unprecedented. And I think it, many are, are rightly really quite worried about what a, a second Trump administration might look like, given, you know, that we know that some of the guardrails that were in place during the first Trump administration have fallen and given what we know about Donald's, Donald Trump's plans for a second administration, I think governments are really worried and, and should be actively planning for what their relationships with the United States might look like under a second Trump presidency. And what we haven't talked about, um, Dr Shortis, is, is that actually this is seen as, as one of the least significant cases that he is facing. There is more to come. There's a lot more to come. And you're right that this, this case has been framed since the beginning, really, as the weakest of the four criminal cases that Donald Trump is facing. But I think what, what's, I guess, noteworthy about this case is that this is the first to establish a kind of arc, really, of attempted election interference and subversion that began with this case before Donald Trump's presidency, before the election. And so the fact that he's been found guilty on all 34 counts in, in this case, I think, suggests to us a little bit how the, how the rest of the cases may play out. Having said that, of course, it's extremely unlikely that any of the other criminal cases will be in any way resolved before we get to November. This was, for a long time, it's been clear that this case was the only one that was going to get close to a resolution before November. But again, this one will probably stretch out as well. You know, Donald Trump has already said that he's going to appeal and delaying these cases has, has been a tried and true tactic of his for a long time. Dr Emma Shortis, thank you for talking to us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.
Thanks for watching. If you'd like to keep up to date with all our latest research and work, sign up to our newsletter. Delivered every fortnight, it includes behind the scenes updates from Richard Dennis, an exclusive cartoon from Judy Horacek, details for our upcoming events and webinars, as well as explainers, graphs, and not to mention the latest cutting edge research and analysis from the team here on the key issues that are facing Australia. Click the button on your screen to check it out.